Thank you, Verna. Good morning to everybody here. Happy Father's Day. Hope you fathers have some fun plans with your children today. <coughs> you children, you should call your dads too if they're not here. Um, so, yeah. Have you called your dads? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> um, I plan to. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, yeah, so good morning again. Um, good to see you all here this morning. A um, couple announcements. Um, the Western North Dakota Family Bible Camp is going to be held July 19th through the 23rd at Mount Carmel Bible, Family Bible Camp, um, which is just east of Minot. So I encourage all of you to show up for that. It'll be a great couple, four or five days. Um, very relaxing. Pastor Jerry Mong is going to be our speaker for the week. Um, and if there's some free time in the afternoon, if you want to go stop by the State Fair, do that too. Um, so another incentive to hang out there as well. Um, there are some brochures and registration forms in the back on our little brochure racks. You can find them there. Um, so yeah, that would be a great time. Um, and if you're not going to be going to the Family Bible Camp, um, Vacation Bible School is going to be here um, that same week and going through from the 20th to the 24th of July. So we uh, have neighbor kids and kids you know, invite them here, and uh, should be a blast. We're having a team come this year, and so, well, we all know what the teams are like. So, um, yeah, come for that. Um, other announcement, if any of you are interested in providing meal for the young adults, um, sign-up sheets on the back of the board, and it's, the whole thing's wide open, so first come, first serve on those. Um, and for those young adults here, um, a, a brunch lunch um, shortly after the service, so. Feel free to join us for that. Are there any other announcements that you can read? No? All right. Um, if you'll follow, if you'll read along in your bulletins, we'll read the call to worship. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our life, momentary troubles are achieving for us. Eternal glory that uh, far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on the unseen, but what is unseen? For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning that you've given us. Um, thank you for showing us who you are through nature, um, through your creation, um, showing us your majesty. And we thank you for all the, the fathers out there that have taken time out of their lives to raise their children. Um, and if it weren't for them, really, none of us would be here. God, and we thank you that, that you are our Father, <coughs> the best Father that we can ever have. God. Um, and I pray for those men here and uh, around this country and even around the world that we would look to you um, to see what a good Father is. I pray that you would bless this service. I pray that we would be able to focus on you and your word, um, not on ourselves, um, but what you have done for us and what you will do for us. I pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you'll stand, we'll sing our hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 187.
Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you to confess that we have sinned against you in our words, actions, and our thoughts. We come to ask your forgiveness and to seek your great mercy. We come to you in the merits of Jesus Christ, not our own. Look not on our sins or our iniquity, but wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, so that we may be clean before you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Protect 
all of our missionaries there, as well as the ones in India and Uganda, uh, and those who are here at home too with Distant Shores Ministries, um, getting Bibles into the languages of the world. God, we thank you for those ministries. We pray that you protect them and make them effective ministries. Give them strength, wisdom, and peace to do those jobs that you've called them to do. And we also pray for those soldiers um, that are home and abroad um, as they face many challenges, not just battles, God, but mental and physical battles as well. God, we, we thank you for their services, um, for giving them a passion to give us freedom. And God, we thank you for that freedom that you've given us through that. The freedom to be here to pray out loud um, and gather together, have fellowship and sing sing praises to you now. We thank you again for your, our fathers. Bless them today on this special day. Just pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And ask that in respect for God's word that uh, you guys would stand. Again, that was Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. Reading from the NIV. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him.
gifts that you've given us, and we thank you for an opportunity to give back to support, support your ministries and your church, God. Pray these things in your name.
bottom is Dave, all the dads and grandpas here. And uh, thank you, Shane, for doing such a good job of leading the service. And you could have told one joke on me, but uh, at uh, Beaver Creek Church. Oh, th thank you to Erna for playing so beautifully here today. She hasn't had a chance to play very often anymore, and it's a lot of work for her to get going, so we really appreciate the beautiful music. Thank you, Erna. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know mistakes anyway when it comes to music. I can't believe you guys, you're not saying a lot enough, so I didn't want to run the last words of this. That's a lot Well, if I sang louder, yeah, it would be a disaster. So, <laughs> can't lay that one on me. We'll lay it on the rest of you. Damien, you could have sang louder for, for me. Yeah. By the way, we have a beautiful baby here in church today. Is it Jameson? Is that the name? Yeah, be sure to meet our new. Newest member here, and a little baby James. What a, what a joy. Is he doing very well? He is doing very well. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Bill? Yes. You announced that the last song is 572 instead of 1 and 4. Yes, if you'll notice the change, uh, Vernon picked that song. It's a good one. I'm not real familiar with it, so I won't try to sing it too loud. But but uh, it's a beautiful song, and thank you, Verna, for, for picking that song. So at the end, I'm going to sing 572. It's up on the announcements there. Well, Beaver Creek there, uh, one of my good friends there, when he heard I was going to be filling in for pastor, he said to me, man, God's really scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> His wife said, all right, be nice. <laughs> so, Cheryl, you don't understand, guys. We love, we love comments like that. But anyway, just so you know, I'm glad we took the offering first. There will be no refunds. I'm sorry. So you're stuck with me now. <laughs> now she's got the money hid away. Our scripture today was Mark chapter 4, 35 and 41. We're going to look at that again. And uh, it's kind of interesting because the, the scripture is about Jesus being out in the boat. And on the way to Williston, Jean was driving and I'm trying to catch a little nap while I was looking over my notes a little more. But anyway, here we were hearing a pastor talk about the very same scripture. And it's kind of interesting because I didn't really imagine what kind of a boat Jesus was in, but he explained that they actually found a boat on the Sea of Galilee, or the Dead Sea, I believe it was there, not many years ago. And they got it reconstructed as in a museum. And this boat was dated back to the time of Christ. Very typical of the fishing boats of that day. It may or may not have had Jesus in it, but a very typical boat. They're about the size of a fishing boat, about seven feet wide, maybe 15, 16 feet long, and about four foot size. He also explained that this lake has a mountain on one end, and then when the cool air comes down and hits the hot air, often very violent storms come up. So it really explained, you know, the scenario of the scripture. So we're going to look at this scripture again here, and if you want to turn with me to Mark, chapter 4, 35 through 41. Can everyone hear me okay? I tend to turn away from the mic sometimes, so I'll try to be careful here. i got to find my glasses, oh, here they are. Okay, we're just going to read uh, two or three of the last verses here. Jesus was in the stern of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. Now remember, it's a violent storm. I don't know how he's sleeping. I can sleep in church, but I don't know if I can sleep in that boat at that point. <laughs> the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves. He talked to the waves as was a person. Quiet, be still. The wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this? These disciples had just witnessed a lot of Jesus' miracles. And yet when they saw this calm sea, they were terrified and afraid of someone that had that kind of power over the elements around them. And they had witnessed the miracles. Today, how much more do we question miracles? 
I've heard people say often, you know, if I could just see some of the miracles that Jesus did, it would be so much easier to believe. You know, if we just look around us, we have so many miracles we don't even realize. And this morning I was uh, sipping coffee and looking over my notes. It was fairly early up. And Janie got me up real early. Oh, thank you, dear. And she said, huh, look out the window. And I ran to the back of her house and looked out and right on our lawn was three beautiful mule deer. They hadn't been triplets, they were spike bucks. They just had the antlers of velvet, about a foot long antlers of velvet. And, uh, and they just were moseying along and stopped and looked in at me and moseyed a little more. And didn't have the camera, I wish I would have, but it was absolutely stunning to see these three Advan triplets, uh, young, young buck mule deers. You know, we see miracles like that of life creation around us, and even more so the miracle of a newborn baby, as we have Jameson with us today. And how can we say things are by chance? Did you know that... Uh, oh, I'll get, I'll get into it later. It is such a miracle life is that we, we don't even comprehend it, do we? You probably heard about the scientist. He's out in a discussion with God. He said, you know, life, you know, I can, I can create life too. And God says, oh, you can? Can you? Or I'll bet you can. Oh, I'll bet you I can. Well, you're on. And the scientist starts looking around. Let's see. I'll just get a little dirt here and get started. And God goes, wait a minute, sir. Get your own dirt. <laughs> Changes the perspective a little bit, doesn't it? We, we only start with what God has already provided for us. I read some time ago that when a baby or it reaches the age of a toddler, there's approximately three trillion connections already in their brain. In my case, I probably haven't reached that yet, but, but, but the average toddler, toddler will have, in that neighborhood, three trillion connections. So I like to do a little math. I'm kind of an engineer at heart. Anyway, if you start out at 100 per second from the day they're born, and continue at 100% at 24-7, how many years do you think it would take to reach 3 trillion? Someone want to guess? 100 per second now. Anyone care to guess? Would it be 10 years? 20 years? 130 years? It's around 1,000 years at 100 per second. And that's happened in a child by the age of a toddler. Isn't that something? And, and we'd like to say that that just happened by chance. I don't think so. So many want to downplay God's miracles today. Pastor Will here a couple weeks ago remember the story of Jonah and how the big fish was prepared to swallow Jonah. And so many want to say, oh, this can't be true. And, you know, and Pastor Will explained it well. Somebody can create a universe preparing a fish is no big deal. But I kind of love the story of little Sally. She's in Sunday school, the teacher's explaining Jonah, you know, and the big fish. And she's so excited about the story of Jonah that when she gets back to school, she can't wait for show and tell. So show and tell, little Sally is explaining to the class, you know, the story of Jonah, how the big fish came and swallowed him. And the teacher is kind of skeptic, skeptical, and the teacher looks at Sally and says, Sally, I don't think this is possible. How can we know that this could be true? I think it's just a story. Sally thought for a moment, looked at the teacher, and her eyes lit up. I know, teacher. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah and see how God prepared the fish. Teacher said, what if Jonah isn't in heaven? Well, Sally said, teacher, then you ask him. Many top educators today, many scientists, would want to say there's no miracles. It's just chance and evolution. How often do we hear that? We hear it in the news media. We hear it in schools. We hear it in every published uh, articles, even. National Geographic, we see it all the time. Does anyone here ever dare to believe that a nice car in a parking lot came from an explosion in a junkyard? Would this church happen if a truck just drove by and spilled a load of lumber? You know, when we see something simple and inanimate as a car or a church, we know that there was someone planted, there was master craftsmen that built it, carpenters for the church, and 
good mechanics in the car and good workers, and yet we want to say that life is by chance. As I just said, how amazing life is and how complex it is, and, and we just <clears throat> we had to realize that. Do you know that Darwin later in life, and he, he wrote this, you can look it up, it's it wrote down, it's uh, in the record. He said it was totally ridiculous, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but his wording was, it's totally ridiculous and to the nth degree that the human eye could have evolved. He also wrote that if we don't find many, many fossils between species showing the change of the evolution of species, my theory will not stand the test. And you know, today we found hundreds, probably thousands of times more fossils than he could have known about. And there's not one missing link. Scientists find a dinosaur bone in South Dakota. They're digging one up down there now, I understand. And they find one in Siberia. Just from a single bone, they can say it's a certain species of dinosaur. If there was hundreds and millions of years between species, there'd been all kinds of mumble jumble, wouldn't there be? And we have yet to find one missing link, not one. There is no evidence, no proof. So Darwin, by his own writing, said that my theory is totally, totally wrong. And yet we want to teach evolution as is fact today, and we don't want to discount it in any way in our schools, in our colleges. The point I'm trying to make here, this just shows the nature of us, the nature of all of us. We want to deny the very reason God gave us just to deny there's a God. And to, to deny a God is to what? To keep us from being accountable, isn't it? It shows a rebellion in our heart. I'm going to look at a verse in Jeremiah here real quick, and we can see what, what the, God says about our heart. It's not a good thing either. Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Who can understand the heart? Now that if we use our reason to see that we have a God, whoa, now like I said, we're accountable. Now that we're accountable, what does that make us feel like? Very unworthy, doesn't it? And we are unworthy, totally unworthy. Look at the disciples again on the lake in the storm, and they could not understand who this God is. Who is this, they said, that could calm the storm? You know, the disciples at that time did not know the rest of the story. They had been with Jesus just a little while. They did not know yet the rest of the story as we have in the Gospels. But this God that we have fully understands our heart, our deceitful heart, our fallen, rebellious heart. With our own human logic then, you know, we can only say we deserve death. This God, for reasons we'll never comprehend, we'll never understand until we get to heaven, has the love so pure for us that he sent his only son to die in our place to take the death we deserve on himself. Let's say together John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. His disciples did go on to witness the rest of the story. They witnessed Christ's agonizing death on the cross. They were confused and terrified at that time, weren't they? And yet, they also witnessed his resurrection, didn't they? they got, Thomas got to feel the spear hole in his side and the nail prints in his hand and feet. And they talked and walked with him and knew that he was resurrected. At this time, then, the disciples truly understood the rest of the story that Jesus had been trying to tell them. This story was so powerful that each disciple went on to risk their lives many times. And all but one actually died a very violent death to spread that good news throughout the world. You know, all of us here have heard this good news many times before. Why do we need to go over it again? 
Maybe you're different than I am, but I know I'm kind of like the disciples. I forget. When storms come, cares of life, frustrations, hard things happen, this distracts us, doesn't it? And we become afraid like the disciples. And at that time, we seem to forget God's power. That's why we need to hear this story so often. When we hear this story, we need to take it to heart, and not just to hear it, but also to share it with others as the disciples did. And the more we can understand God's love for us, the more we can begin to share it with others as we experience that joy. The challenge I have today for each of us here is to love God more each day, to love Jesus in a way that we haven't before. He's the one that gives us all. Even the very breath I'm taking now to speak comes from God. And we don't recognize that, do we, when we go about our busy lives. A lot of us here have had dads and grandpas and maybe a man in our, in our past that have meant a lot to us, that taught us a lot of good things. And our challenge to dads today is that we would carry on that tra tradition. And I'm going to give a little time here. I'm going to share a little bit about my own dad, but... Guys, just think about it. If anyone would like to share a little about what your dad or grandpa or someone in your life that meant a lot to you, that can be a challenge to each of us here today to carry that tradition forward. You know, we, we use the Bible as our guide, and God is our true guide, but, but often people can, uh, can witness, as the disciples did. We can look to them as real role models for us. I know growing up, my dad wasn't a church goer, and Yet he always instilled in us that there was a God. And one thing that struck me as the years went by, how honest my dad was, integrity he had. In the oil field, a lot of times his work would, would be gone because others would come in and, and bribe the, the contractors or the tool pushers or whoever and, and take the work away. And my dad says he wouldn't go there. He said, it'll come back. Now we'd have some lean uh, months, but the work always did come back because he did a good job and they knew it. But this was just one of the things my dad taught us was, was integrity. He never overcharged. Often I saw him work, maybe a farmer come in with a loader all tore up that he'd run into something with. And dad was an expert at it and knew just how to straighten things. And when he had all done, he said, well, this took quite a bit of time, but he couldn't charge the full time. Even though he was good at it, he'd get it fixed just right. He would uh, often not charge. And I never, ever saw him ever overcharge anyone. He would always give time that he never overcharged. That was just one of the things that stuck with me that I learned from my dad. And I'm sure many of you here have some stories too, maybe of your own uh, dads or grandpas or, or someone in your life. And don't need to be bashful. Pardon? Jumped out of the pickup and 
got, got up the steps and he said, Joel, he says, you remember me? And Joel looked at him and he says, well, I don't know. He says, I've worked with a lot of men. And he says, well, he says, I just had to tell you. He says, I was an alcoholic when I worked with you. And he says, I just knew that, that was you on the way. Because he said, I could tell it by the work. And he said, I want you to know that I have accepted Jesus as my Savior. And I think so many times of that, that um, he, he never spoke that much. You know, he was kind of quiet. And uh, of course, most of you know his favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all thine heart, lean on him and I will understand him. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And his last three years were wonderful years because whenever I would sing songs, Christian songs, he'd sing with me. God never took that away. I'd say the Lord's prayer with him, and God never took that away. So we know that even if they don't get their mind or have their mind in the end, that God gives them that. And uh, so I think of him today, uh, of course, and I uh, wish I could give him a card, but I look at his picture and, and I say, Happy Father's Day, Daddy. And um, so, but uh, that, that's what got me more than anything was that he was so quiet that a lot of people weren't sure where, where he stood, I think. But he, he lived his Christianity. Thank you very much. Yeah, Joe was one too that I really looked up to and guided me a lot. I appreciate it, Joe, so much. Very quiet man, and yet Christ is showing through him. Anyone else have any? Another one, some of us here have met, and he's been gone for some years now, his only Mary Stafford's dad. What a godly man he was, and what inspiration. Is this not a... But Ole was one that I sure appreciated so much, and uh, yeah, and he, I was so missed when he was when he left us. So many around that have helped us, I think, and uh, we need to. As men be examples to others, as we have been example too, and this is our challenge today. Ralph is thinking here, do you have anything to say? I guess the ones, the strongest memory I probably have of my father, and I must have been about, I'm going to say 10 years old, and my father was at work and mom was home, and I was, I was really being a, a turkey. I really was. I was Anyone else? Now's your chance. I, <clears throat> I want to share something about Joan's dad. Joan's, um, Joan's dad was... Penny, what's his first name? Side. Side. But his last name was Pepper and where he lived. We call that area Pepperville because... <coughs> And, and Cy was a quiet man, but I went over to visit him once. He was he was my neighbor when I was teaching at that school, and uh, he took out his violin and his wife sat and played piano, and um, they were just a wonderful example too for the neighbors and, and me. And, and I'm sure Joan has hundreds of stories to tell about Mr. Pepper. <laughs> I'd like to make one comment if I could. I was just thinking the other day when Daddy was out plowing with a team of horses and a Dubai plow, what he would have think if he went to Bill Sheldon's farm and saw the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed it on that Yes, amen, amen, amen. Let me greet you, the marvelous 
In the high name of Jesus Christ. Amen to all the fathers. Let me say happy Father's Day. Uh, I'm Evangelist Vincent Walker, Ambassadors Community Action Network. Uh, glad to be here. Amen. God has blessed our fathers over the years. Amen. And raised us. Amen. And sometimes we, we put it on us. Amen. We went on to the woodshed. Amen. Praise God. So I'm glad to be here. Amen. With a mind to serve God. And we raise our children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And definitely to the women. My mother would tell us my last name is Walker. She said, Walkers put their best foot forward. Amen. So I'm glad for our parents and how they brought us up so that when the going get tough, amen? Amen. The tough can get going. Amen. It's not easy, but it's tough love. And, and, and the ultimate example is in Jesus Christ. Amen. He did it on Calvary. He did it publicly. Amen. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And again, to our parents that they taught us. They taught us. Amen. Even when we didn't want to hear it. But they got that old-fashioned upbringing. <laughs> Amen. So I'm here today because of them. So God bless you here, this great church. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for the pastor, Pastor Williamson. Amen. His family. I'm a part of that association. We're doing a work in the community. Uh, pray for us. The best is yet to come. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Amen. We should remember to pray too for Pastor and his family as they're traveling this week and at the annual conference and then traveling with some friends or family on the West Coast. So just pray for safe travel and safe coming home for them. And that this would be a wonderful time of rest too for them. As we close our service here, we'll turn to hymn number, I believe it's 572 here. 572. Pardon? Oh, okay, I'm doing it wrong here. I'll look at I should have looked at the bulletin first. You're right. Let's uh, say the Lord's Prayer together with me this morning. The prayer of Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now our closing hymn, 572. <clears throat>
receive the benediction. The benediction that I love is from Hebrews chapter 13, it's verses 20 through 21. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the death, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.